the contemporary work by Lisandro E. Claudio, Patricio, and Abinales. Good day, my dear friends. This week one, we are going to tackle about the week one, lesson one, what is globalization? And in order for us to understand fully about globalization, I'm going to share it with you, the story. of Jeyo, Latif, and the Laksa. How they would be able to emphasize and to embrace the real meaning of globalization through a good rapport that they established to each one of them. Let's start the story. What is globalization? Let's try to hear and I'm going to read for you the story of J.O. Latif and the Laksa. When J.O. was a second-year international affairs student in a university in Cebu City, he obtained funding to join the school team participating in an international model United Nations competition in Sydney, Australia. At the height of the competition, J.O. made plenty of new friends and became particularly close to Latif from the Malaysian team. The two first started talking when Latif asked Jayu. He was from a pond, discovering that Jayu was from the Philippines. Latif lit up and declared that he was a big fan of Filipino actors Jericho Rosales and Christine Hermosa. Jayu was pleasantly surprised to learn that Latif had seen every episode of the ABS-CBN telenovela Pangako Sayo or The Promise. The show had aired on Malaysian TV a few years back and its two starts had developed a modest following. Ashamed that he did not know as much about Malaysia as Latif knew about the Philippines, Jayo asked Latif what his country was like. Latif, he discovered, was from a Muslim university in Kuala Lumpur. Jayo asked him what he liked best about living in Kuala Lumpur, and Latif immediately mentioned the food. Latif explained that, Kuala, that in Kuala Lumpur, one can find Chinese, Indian, and Malaysian cuisines. He told Jayo that this assortment of food ways has the result of how the British reorganized Malaysian society during the colonial times. The British did little to change the way of life of the Malays who were the origin, res, original residents, but brought in Chinese laborer to work in the rubber plantation and tin mines, and Indians to help manage the bureaucracy and serve as the initial professional core of a potential middle class, one of the ways that these ethnic groups were identified was through their food ways. According to Latif, Malaysian eventually became famous for these cuisines, which can be found in the various hawker centers across the nation's cities and towns. These food stands are located in outdoor food parks where locals and tourists taste the best of Malaysia, from Nasi Limak to Laksa. Jaya interrupted Latif and asked, What is Laksa? He felt more ashamed as his lack of knowledge. Ah, let me show you what it is and how it is prepared. Relief replied by Latif. And that's the, the look of Laksa noodles as Lat is trying to portray about laksa that is for our information in order for us to see the beauty of the food that Latif is trying to promote to Jaya. The next day, Latif took Jaya to a Malaysian restaurant a few blocks away from the university. Jaya was surprised to discover that Malaysian food was readily available in Sydney. Having noticed 
this, Natip explained to his Filipino friend that, over the years, as more and more Malaysian students moved to Sydney to study, Malaysian restaurants followed suit. Soon after, they were catering not only to these students, but also to Australia-born Sydney ciders as well, whose culinary tastes were becoming more and more diverse. Jayo finally had his first taste of laksa, a rice noodle soup in a spicy coconut curry sauce. If you're going to put this one into the Filipino context, viands, it looks like chicken curry, but it's different because they are putting an additional rice and additional noodles in order to taste more better and more pleasant to their taste and to their eyes. He found that the flavors intense since, like most Filipinos, he was not used to, to, as, to eat a spicy food. Same with me. I cannot choke. Maybe I will be choked if I'm going to eat spicy food. Not like now, because I can able to tolerate, I can able to manage, and I can able to eat spicy food. Because the first time that when I tried to eat spicy food, it's really choke. It really chokes me. It's so hard. However, in difference to his friend, he persisted and eventually found himself enjoying the hot dish. After the meal, Jayu and Latif went to a nearby cafe and ordered flat whites, an espresso drink similar to latte, which is usually served in cafe in Australia and New Zealand. Both knew what flat whites were since there were Australian-inspired cafes on both Kuala Lumpur and Cebu. The new friends promised to stay in touch after the competition and added each other on Facebook and Instagram. Over the next two years, they exchanged emails and post congratulated each other for their achievements and commented on, on and liked each other's photos. Latif sent his mother's recipe to Jayu and the latter began cooking Malaysian food in his house. A few years after graduation, Jayu moved to Singapore, joining many other overseas Filipino workers or OFWs in the city-state. The culture was new to him, but one thing was familiar. The food served in Singapore was no different from the Malaysian food he had discovered through Latif. He would late learn from Singaporean colleagues that the island country was once part of the British colony of Malay and the post-war independent federation of the Malaysian. Singapore, however, separated from the federation in August 1965 and became a nation state. Today, they may be two distinct countries in this part of the world, but Singapore and Malaysia still share the same cuisines. After he settled down in his apartment, Jayu sought out and found a favorite laksa stall in Newton Hawker Center. He would spend his weekends there with friends eating laksa and other dishes because he really misses so much that laksa. One Saturday, while Jayu was checking his Facebook feed along the very busy Orchard Road, Singapore's main commercial road, he noticed that Latif has just posted something five minutes earlier. It was a picture from Orchard Road, surprised but also excited. Jaya sent Latif a privilege, a private message. Latif replied immediately saying that he too had moved to Singapore and was at that moment standing in front of a department store just a few, a few blocks away from where Jay was. The two friends met up, and after a long hack and quick questions as to what it was up to, they duck into a cafe and renew their international friendships by ordering a fair of plat 